Hi, I'm Harvey Webster, and welcome to Creature Features. For this episode of Creature Features, we're in the Ralph Perkins II Wildlife Center and Woods Garden, presented by KeyBank, on the museum campus, and we're in front of the Rayburn Eagle Experience, and we're talking all about bald eagles, Hyliatus leucocephalus, the national bird. We have two bald eagles here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. On display, we have Ashkate, a large female bald eagle that came to us from the Sarvi Wildlife Center in the state of Washington. She was injured as a youngster and cannot fly very well, which is why she remained in captivity. Now, one of the things that's typical about bald eagles is the fact they have a white head, and yet they're called a bald eagle. Are they bald? Well, it turns out, originally, a couple hundred years ago, the word bald actually meant white. And when John James Audubon, the famous painter, painted his picture of a bald eagle, he called it the bald-headed or white-headed eagle. So they're not really bald. They have a full head of feathers. They generally have a dark, dark brown, almost black body, white tail, white head, a brilliant orange beak, and then these straw yellow eyes. Now they're sea eagles or fish eagles, which means they're generally tied to a body of water and they feed upon an awful lot of the aquatic life, whether that's fish or muskrats or ducks and waterfowl, the things that live in water. And we find them throughout the state of Ohio, but it wasn't always that way. In the late 1970s, the bald eagle was a critically endangered species in Ohio, with only four active pairs left nesting in the state. Fortunately, through the efforts of many, many institutions and agencies, including the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, we've been able to bring them back. And now you can find them almost anywhere in the state of Ohio, but particularly along the Lake Erie shoreline. Bald eagles have a seven-foot wingspan. They're just extraordinary, noble, and majestic birds. They've got enormous talons at the end of each toe. They've got four toes in each foot, so they've got eight talons, and these talons can be as long as an inch long. They're very, very sharp and hooked, and they're designed for latching on to the animal that they want to use for food. Once they've got it, then they've got that massive hooked beak, which they can use both to kill it, and then to hold it in their talons and tear off a bite-sized piece. I gotta tell you, Ashkate means eagle in a Northwest Indian language. But around here, we call Ashkate spaghetti. Why? Because if you give her a mouse and she swallows it whole, the last thing to go down the gullet is the tail, and it looks just like a piece of spaghetti. And it gives you a sense of how efficient these animals are in that when they do catch something and kill it, they tend to eat all of it. No muss, no fuss, no waste. Now about 10 hours later, they're gonna regurgitate a little pellet. They spit up, okay? Some people call it eagle puke. But it turns out what comes up is the hair, the scales, the bones, whatever was indigestible in their last meal. Kind of cool. All birds of prey do that. So when you're along the Lake Erie shoreline, particularly in northwestern Ohio, or if you're at any one of the large reservoirs that we have in the state of Ohio, or sometimes even in a local park, like the Brucey Park out in East Lake, which is nothing more than a baseball diamond, and there's an active bald eagle nest in the back of it. Wherever you are in Ohio, look for bald eagles. Or you could come right here to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and check out Ashkate, or maybe, George the bald eagle on the glove of one of our wildlife specialists. This has been Creature Features. I'm Harvey Webster.